All right, so this Knife Thoughts video is going to be a run overview of these knives. And these are both of the two Great Eastern Cutlery number 38 English Whittler versions that uh, they made here in 2021. So first of all, uh, let's take a look at the knives. This is the first one that came out. This is the Bloodwood version. And you can see that the model number is 380321 which means that it has a Warncliffe main blade. It's the 38 pattern there. Um, and then there are three blades and it was made in 2021. So let's take a look at it here now. I don't have any other knives in Bloodwood. I don't even know if I've had any other knives in Bloodwood in the past. Um, so I was interested to see what this one looked like. And it's pretty nice looking. Um, it's kind of like a, an orangish reddish color to this wood and it's really tough to show on camera but it does have some, some uh, chitoyance i'm always not sure if i'm pronouncing that correctly but um, some kind of shimmer to it and again you, you can't see it as well on camera as in person um, but nice grain also um, pretty you know so got some lines and then some you know spots in there and it's a well-made knife um, so you know, pretty good transitions, no big gaps or anything. Actually, no gaps at all really between those transitions uh, or between the bolsters and the covers. Um, now, one thing on this knife is that the split back, and I'll talk about what that is in a little bit more in a second. This does stand up quite a bit, um, more than I would like. It's pretty easy to catch your finger on it, and I can't really push it back down in, which I've seen, you know, some people say that they're able to on theirs. Uh, so I'm not super happy with that, but I think that's just part of it being a split back whittler. And that's what this is. So what that means is that there are two springs here uh, on the knife. It is a three blade knife. And those two springs go to the two secondary blades. So it has two secondary blades here, which are a pen blade, which has a half stop and, a, you know, probably like a four pull on it. And then a small sheet foot blade. Um, also has a half stop and about a four pull. So those springs are the respective springs for those blades. And then there is a liner in the middle. But what they do is they make this liner actually taper down until both of those springs come together to form the spring for the main blade, which is on this version, a Warrencliffe, and it does not have a half stop. So this is kind of an interesting Warrencliffe. It's kind of maybe a little bit of a stubby Warrencliffe, not as pointy a tip as some Warrencliffe knives, which I'll uh, give you an example of here. In the recent number 19, Little Rattler. Um, so a little bit pointier of a tip on the Little Rattler, which is maybe more typical of a Warrencliffe. Um, but still a good looking blade, I think. And again, those two springs make up the spring for the main blade. So it is a little bit thicker of a blade. And um, they call this the English Whittler. They did a similar knife previously that they called the Grinling Whittler, which instead of a um, Warncliffe main blade, it had a clip point main blade. And I don't have one of those to show you, but one of the big things that people noticed is that the Warncliffe on this knife is shorter than the clip point was on the Grinling version. Now for me, I don't mind that because it means that this point sits well down within the frame so that you don't have to worry about the tip being proud and catching your finger on it or anything. Uh, some people, you know, said that they wish that it was longer, but for me, that's, that's not a an issue really at all. Um, the only thing on this one, again, this sits a good bit higher than I think I would like it to. Uh, so let's move on to the next one here. And first off, I want to show this two bar. I really, really like this two bar. Um, so you can see it says GEC in kind of old timey letters and then has this shield, um, which actually mirrors the shape of the shield that's on the knife which is, as far as I know, the first time GEC has used this type of shield. Um, but it has the unexcelled, with the X being, you know, part of the, the crest there, which is really cool. But even cooler 
if you look in here, it has three oil drakes. And Titusville, where Grady's and Cutlery is and where these knives are made, is known as the birthplace of the oil industry. It's where the first com commercial oil well is. And so that's really cool to see. Um, I like the iconography of it. You can see that it has the leaves, um, which is one of GEC's kind of, um, you know, parts of their logo, parts of their uh, icon iconology, I guess you would say. And then same deal here with these acorns at the bottom. So really cool to see um, a mix of, of kind of symbols that GEC typically uses mixed in with some, you know, kind of English or old timey type uh, symbols in this way that really fits the English whittler name that it has. So I really like this tube art a lot. I actually, um, even though I'm not even sure that I'm gonna keep either of these knives, I think I might get uh, some of the stickers that traditional pocket knives uh, had made with this shield just because I like it a lot. Um, but this one is again 380321, but in burnt orange jig bone. And by the way, both of these knives are from collector knives. Um, I got in on the reserves and uh, really the reason I wanted to get both of these is because one, um, I have never had a bloodwood knife and two, uh, when the Grindling Whittlers came out before, I just didn't think I was into it. Uh, into the idea of a split back whittler. I, I do some like super, super casual whittling every now and then, I guess if I'm camping, but I'm not like, you know, a whittler. I, I can't like whittle, you know, figures and stuff like that. I've tried, but I, I can't really do it. Um, so when those Grinlings came out, I didn't get one and they were super, super popular. One of the most sought after knives from GEC. So I thought I should get one of these just to see if I liked it here. Um, and also I thought that this burnt orange jig bone looks super cool. Now that's the first thing I'll say on this is that um, there was a huge variation from pictures I've seen people posting in the bone color. Um, some were very, very dark uh, and some like mine were very light. Now, um, I actually like it. it. It reminds me of what I think that, that uh, Case calls their salmon bone, but um, I, I think that it looks pretty good. It, it has some pretty light areas like right here um, and right here, but uh, it, it does look pretty good. It's got kind of a caramel tannish color to it. And I like the jigging style too, the, the darker colored in the, in the jigging. Um, so I do like the look of it quite a bit. Now this one, does not have as high a uh, split back, you know, uh, liner there. You can catch it with a fingernail, but not so much on your finger. Um, and it, it does, it's definitely not as high. I'll show you the, the other one again here. So you can see the difference. It's pretty, pretty clear in the difference. Um, this one, same deal. Uh, the pull on the main blade is closer to like a six. And then it has this, again, this, Really cool, I think, unexcelled etch, uh, well, kind of old timey gothic, you might call it, I think, um, etching or uh, font. And uh, this one has a cut swedge and the nail nick is in the cut swedge. I don't typically prefer to have a nail nick in a cut swedge, but it doesn't seem to affect the ease of opening on this one. Um, and then same deal on the secondaries here, uh, about a four pull pen blade and small sheep foot. Um, so one thing, I haven't used either of these knives, but it does feel pretty ergonomic. Um, even with this Warncliffe being kind of high here, you, you can get you know a pretty good grip without that Warncliffe like pushing into your fingers. And you'd probably be using it more in like a pinch style grip anyway. And then with the main blade open, I actually really like the 38 grip. I don't have a user 38. I'll show you my only other 38 right now, which is the 2017, I believe, Rendezvous Special. Um, so this is the 38 Special. Uh, and it is a much different knife, as you can see. It is a single blade and it has a Turkish style clip point and is, um, no half stop on that blade, uh, but 
really nice. I just don't use it because I don't use the rendezvous specials, but I do think that the 38 pattern has really good ergonomics. It fits in the hand really well. So I was kind of hoping to make one of these a user, but I'm not sure that I will. I just still am kind of on the fence about the split back. Um, this is another three bladed knife here. This is the number 29 Stockyard Whittler, and it has three blades uh, and a spring for each blade. So it is a little thicker um, than the English Whittler, which I will show you here. You know, it's a little thicker for sure. Um, but to be honest, if you're going to use the knife for whittling, and I have actually used this one for a little bit of whittling, um, I'm not sure the thickness is a real problem. Uh, when you're holding the knife, you know, and, and cutting, uh, being a little bit thicker makes it so you can get a little bit better grip. So um, I'm not so sure that I prefer a split back style construction over, you know, a uh, three spring style. I'm not exactly even sure what you call this style uh, where each blade has a spring, but um, I, I'm not sure that I prefer the split back over this type for practicality. Now, one of the things I think that makes split back whittlers popular is that it is, you know, a, a pretty um, impressive feat to pull off getting this to work. You know, it's kind of a weird style of, of you know, making a knife. It, it's kind of asymmetrical in a way that you don't see on modern knives, certainly, and not even on most traditional knives. You know, it's literally like thinner here than it is here. Um, because it doesn't have that liner. So it's kind of interesting, um, and it is pretty cool that they can get it to work. So I do appreciate the uniqueness of that, but I'm just not sure that it's something that, that you know, I'd use. Um, I did want to keep one of these as a user, didn't really intend to keep one as a collection piece, and I just don't know if I'll be able to find much use for it. Uh, so I, I would say that it's not really my favorite knife that GEC has made. I think that it's cool. I think that it has, you know, uniqueness to it. Certainly this one has a lot of uniqueness to it with this new shield and, um, you know, being a split back and also this color. I don't think GEC has done a whole lot of knives in this type color. And then with that iconography, which again, I really enjoy of the crest and then the old timey font on the blade there. So even though I don't think it's necessarily the knife for me or not my favorite knife from GEC, it's still really cool and I'm glad I got to check them out because like I said, I didn't get one uh, when they did the split back whittler on the, the Grinling whittler on the 38 pattern previously. So I've, I've enjoyed getting to check them out and uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have, go ahead and hit the thumbs up. You can also subscribe to my channel and uh, click the bell so you get notifications when I post new videos so you don't miss any. And then also check out my social media on Instagram and Facebook at Knife Thoughts and my website, knifethoughts.com, where I post articles on knives like this and knife-related topics. And last but not least, as always, don't forget to go out and do good.